Hey guys, Dave here again, JDH Reptiles. Today I want to talk to you guys about uh, genetics. And I'm no genetic whiz, but I do understand a little bit how recessives, codominance, and dominance work. And a lot of people on our group page on Facebook have asked um, if I can explain that. So I'm going to give it my best shot for you today. And um, yeah, let's, let's just run right into it real quick. This won't take long. It's really pretty easy. Uh, we'll start with recessives because that's usually where most of the confusion comes in. Uh, recessive genes like albino, um, clown, you know, some of those right there. You got, you know, your G-stripe. Those are where you need both parents to give off one side of the gene to make it visual. So the way it works, we'll start out, we'll make it easy. If you were to take a visual albino, so we're going to use albino for this whole thing here. A visual albino to a normal ball python, just your regular normal wild type. 100% all the babies will be heterozygous for albino. And what that means is they're all going to look normal, but they will all carry the albino gene. So now if we were to take that visual albino, so this is usually how it works with breeding, is you take, say for instance, if your visual albino was a male, and your normal was a female, you'll take all your females that are heterozygous for albino, go back to the father, so that's what we got here, visual albino to the heterozygous child. That's the way we do it with snakes. In All this is written out in four eggs, we'll say, and this is all just a percentage. You could always have all albinos, all normals, all heads, but this is the theory behind it. You would get two visuals, and two that are 100% heterozygous. So with this pairing, what I can tell you is you, possibility is two visuals and three heterozygous. Or one, or sorry, two visuals and two heterozygous. One visual, three heterozygous. You can have all heterozygous. And the heterozygous ones are all gonna look normal, but again, they'll carry the gene for albino. So that's what happens when you do a visual to a het. Now, if you were to take that het, the original hat and go back to the normal what you're going to have there is 50% are going to be uh, normal and 50% are going to be heterozygous the problem is all the babies are going to look normal and because it's only a 50% chance that they're going to be heterozygous that is where we you see online like uh, whatever it may be pinstripe 50% hat G stripe or you know albino Basically, they don't know because this is probably what they did and they got all pinstripes. So, uh, say they had four eggs. They all could be heterozygous. One could, two could, none could. You don't know. That's why most of the time when dealing with uh, hets, you really want to deal with someone that you know and you want to deal with 100% hets because then you know even though it's not a hundred percent that you're going to get a visual, you have a way better chance of getting a visual because you can take this 50% hat, or I should say what you think to be a 50% hat and breed it once and get nothing. You can breed it a second time and then all of a sudden you get something. Or if it really isn't heterozygous, you get nothing. So the last one in this recessive column is taking 200% heterozygous a male and a female and put them together. What you're going to get, and again this is a four eggs, is your theory is to get one visual, so you get one albino, you're going to get one normal, and you're going to get two that are what they call 66% pet. And again that 66% is just a percentage out of four eggs, two out of the three that look normal are going to be heterozygous or should be heterozygous. So with 66% hats, you have three out of the four snakes that are going to be normal looking. The problem is you don't know which one of the three, if any, are heterozygous. So again, that's the recessive. Codominants are quite a bit easier. Uh, codominants be like Mojave, um, Pastel. Those are going to be codominant genes. So, for instance, we're going to use Mojave in this one because it's real easy. Uh, we all know what a Mojave is, and we also, if you don't know, a Super Mojave, which I will explain here, is a 
uh, Blue Eyed Lucy. So this would be the same with like Lesters and Butters. But anyway, so a Mojave, so you take a visual Mojave, and you pair that to a male. In theory, 50% or half of the eggs should be Mojave, and half of them are going to be normals. Now there's nothing heterozygous about any of this. It's just visual. You get what you get. So you're going to have two normals, two Mojaves. That is it. There's no hidden genes. Now the only time you'd have hidden genes, obviously we won't get into that, is if the Mojave or the normal had a het gene into it. But let's not get that far today. Now if you take the Kodam, which was Mojave, and you bring it to another Mojave, so two visual Mojave snakes together, you'll get again, one that's a super, which would be a super Mojave or a blue-eyed Lucy. You're going to get one normal, and you'll get two that are Mojave. And again, this is all just percentage-wise. You may get no supers, you may get all normals, you may get two codons and two normals, but this is what, theoretically, you should get if you have four A's. So that's codon. Really simple, there's only two ways to do it. You take codon to a normal and get 50-50s, or you take a codon to itself and you get supers, one normal, and two that are codominant. That's the way it works. And last but not least is dominant genes. Dominant gene, pinstripe, is the first one that comes to mind. If you take a pinstripe and you breed it to a normal, just like the code on here, you're going to get 50% of them that are going to be pinstripe and 50% that are going to be normal. Again, that's just what you should get. Now, if you take a pinstripe to a pinstripe, you're going to get pinstripe. There's no super form. Basically, codon to codon is like saying its final form is a super, which would be like a dominant gene per se. It's actually a super gene, but it's, it's like calling it a dominant. With dominance, there is no super gene. So a pinstripe to a pinstripe will get you a pinstripe. There's no super pin. That's all there is to it. So hopefully this gave you a, a little bit of an idea of how this works. Again, it's not perfect. And again, these are all percentages, so they can vary. You know, your eggs can be all of one, some of none. You just, you never know. So that's how that works. Uh, if you have any questions, leave comments below. You can find us on our Facebook page. Uh, I'm going to post this there, so we'll have a thread about it as well there. From there, guys, just check out our Instagram. So everybody have a great evening. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And if this was helpful, that'd be great for you to do.